Okay, here's basically what I'm working with. Um, let me clear off the desk here real quick. Uh, basic first process you need to do is add the electrical connections to the cell itself. Um, again, these are really thin and they're easy to break, so uh, I've been using this thing that I've made out of some mat board, which doesn't seem to fit all the cells because these are uh, like factory second grade, so they're not the best. Let me grab a different one just in case, just so it fits a little better. Okay, that fits. Just kind of holds it in place, so you can grab onto this when you're working and keeps the cell from sliding. Uh, first things first, it's pretty easy. You basically just need to uh, attach the tabbing wire to this bus bar here. I think that's the right term for it. Um, in theory, the tabbing wire is impregnated with solder and you shouldn't need to add any more, but the stuff I have, I find that it's just a lot easier to run a strip solder down each bus bar which hopefully will give me a good electrical connection to start with and you know in theory I might be able to just tack wires to that directly um, I'm doing it the way that they claim you're supposed to do it and using tab wire which you basically pull off a couple lengths of this clip it into two so, sort of close to equal length wires it's, it's not rocket science, so it doesn't have to be accurate. You're just kind of using these to join the cells together in series to raise the voltage. Each one's about half a volt, so um, give or take, depends on the conditions. I was the first one I put together, I was getting about 19 volts out of um, with 36 cells, so uh, running in series. So, anyway, once you get this, get the tabbing wires uh, cut to about the right length. I usually go through and kind of heat up the solder on top, uh, kind of get it started. You just kind of want to lay these. Also make sure they're not, you know, these things are pretty flexible, but if there's any big kinks in them, you probably should get it out. Uh, you know, get it kind of straightened out before you put it all together. At this point, I've been getting rid of my soldering iron because it's only a 40 watt and it seems to be a pain. Uh, these things seem to absorb a lot of heat, so I've been switching to a 100 watt crappy soldering gun. I have a feeling if you bought a decent soldering iron, this wouldn't be an issue, but since I'm trying to do this as cheap as I can, and I already have a crappy soldering iron and a crappy soldering gun, I'm just making do with what I have. So, I added a little solder to the tip of the gun, not so much that it's actually going to, that solder is going to do any adhering, it seems like it helps with the heat transfer because basically what I'm do doing is heating the tabbing wire which in turn heats that strip of solder I laid down on the cell and this seems like it improves the chances of it adhering if you put a little solder on the tip because otherwise you're just making contact with whatever metal is there so anyway, yeah, that's the tabbing wire so that's basically the negative uh, portion of the cell positive side is the back, which is a lot easier to deal with. It's got these six pads. Usually flux those up just to clean them off. Get a little bit of solder, even though the crappy gun or uh, iron works for this. Just add a little bit to each pad. And you don't need a ton, but you need enough that later on when you're joining the cells together, you have enough to uh, stick it to there. So anyway, that's what you got when you're finished. And um, basically I'm going to put three of these together. When we get done with that, uh, we'll go ahead and join them together into a group of three.